Kitco Mining special coverage of the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference is brought to you by Snowline Gold. In a little over a year, Hecla Mining has done a spate of transactions, acquisition of attack resources, Alexco, and a bump up in its interest in Dolly Bard Silver. The CEO is Phil Baker. Phil, welcome back to Kitco. Glad to be here. A lot of changes at Hecla over a little over a year. What would you highlight as being the most meaningful, Phil? Look, uh, the acquisition of, uh, of Alexco with Kino Hill, it's an amazing ore body, and the exploration that we're seeing there uh, is everything that we imagine, plus it's, uh, it's really quite remarkable. And I, I think this is going to be an incredible mining district. It already is, but mm -hmm. it's going to be even greater. You know, it's a 200 million ounce district. Um, we don't know what the, the limit is going to be. Uh, now, uh, you, you announced your uh, final year in uh, recently in uh, January. Um, you did have a... Just our production results. Just your production results. Uh, you did have a, um, how would you say, you did have some incidents that happened. Uh, sure. You had the fire in Alaska. There was oh, the... In, uh, in, in Idaho. Fire sorry, in my Idaho. fault. My yeah. fault. Forest, and then the forest fire in Quebec, and then also the Lucky Friday incident as well. Were these all one-offs right now for yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. So let me, let me talk about each of them. Of course, yeah. in, in Quebec... We were subject to the same fires that everyone else was. Um, yeah. Having said that, there was no fires really near, specifically near our operation. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Quebec government shut down access to the forest roads, so so we weren't able to to uh, advance the the mine. But the mine's doing very well. We've changed the direction of the mine. We were doing both open pit and underground. We, we needed to simplify the operation, and so we are moving just open pit, mm -hmm. and we're well on the way, and we should uh, we should be there by the middle of this year, just just open pit. Um, at the Lucky Friday in uh, in Idaho, the the fire we had was a fire that occurred a mile underground, and we don't know exactly what the cause was, um, but uh, we have. Uh, now taking care of all of that, it took us uh, four months to rehabilitate uh, what we needed to rehabilitate and to build, and uh, we're back in production. We should be in full production by the end of the quarter. Hecla announces that it has an American focus, Canadian focus also, with uh, the acquisitions that you've done that I mentioned off of the top. Um, when you uh, think about silver, you certainly think about uh, the mines down in uh, Latin America. What do you like to underline or what is important about having this uh, North American focus at Hecla? Well, we, we have had this North, North American focus and, uh, and to the extent we can continue to grow in the U.S. and Canada, we'll certainly do that. And you can see that with our investment in Dolly Varden. You can see that with the, you know, we have 20 projects in the company, half of which are gold, half of which are silver. Mm -hmm. So to the extent we can advance those, you'll see that. But we recognize for us to grow quicker, we need to be in either Mexico, Peru, Bolivia, Argentina. So mm -hmm. we're actively looking at opportunities in each of those jurisdictions. Uh the U.S. did come in for some criticism. Um, it, was, it was a story that was kind of percolating, I would say, probably about a year ago, and that was just uh, the difficulty in terms of being able to develop a mine down there. So the legal hurdles that Ioneer hit, or Lithium Americas, or what happened up with Twin Metals. Has the environment changed for mining in the U.S. right now? You know, it's, it's, it really has changed dramatically for just development in the United States and across a lots of, of industries, but particularly mining. Um, and you can see that with um, legislation that was passed in May of, of last year that actually set the time limits for a, a record of decision, whether it's an EA or an EIS. There's literally a, a length of time that is, is provided. Um, that's the first step in, in reform that's happening. The second step will be the re judicial review of these, of these permits. Um, and I think that's going to happen either this year or next year because both the Republicans and the Democrats um, recognize with, uh, you know, what happened with the pandemic uh, on the supply chain, with, with economic, uh, military security, you know, with the energy transition, they both want to see permitting reform. So there's going to be some compromise that will happen between them. 
Uh, and as a result of that, I think it really will change the dynamic around the world where you're going to see permitting improve. You know, they're going to follow the U.S.'s lead. If the U.S. makes it easier to permit, other countries, particularly Canada, will, uh, will follow its lead. Uh, you mentioned uh, critical minerals, so uh, certainly in your uh, presentation uh, and uh, talking about uh, the importance of silver within the energy transition. However, is silver more broadly recognized as being a critical mineral? So I see, for instance, like uh, Canada left it off of its list of sure. uh, critical minerals right now as well, too. Is there a broader understanding or an appreciation of silver, or is it something that uh, you're lobbying for? No, it's something we're, we're, we're certainly lobbying for, but, ha but having said that, um, it's, it's not, uh, we're, silver deposits are going to advance regardless of whether it's on a critical minerals list or, or not. Um, it, is, uh, it is clearly uh, one of the key elements of this energy transition. The, the Energy Information Agency just came out with their report on what they think happened in 2023. And they, uh, they've said basically 75% of all of the renewables that have were, was installed in 2023 were solar. And that's about 350 gigawatts, which implies almost 190 million ounces of silver had to go into the construction of those solar panels. Um, that's, you know, call it 15, 16% of total demand for silver. So that, that need for silver for solar is, is being recognized and it's something we're trying to, to get communicated more broadly. You did, uh, you upped your stake in uh, Dolly Barton this yep. year. Uh, what do you like about that uh, project uh, that uh, you're focused a little more attention? Well, on? It's, it's a silver project in Canada and yeah. we really want to be involved with any sort of silver that's in uh, Canada and the United States. Uh, mining sector has been tough. Phil, <laughs> uh, you look at uh, the GDX, uh, it has uh, been down uh, over the past year. Uh, I think it's by double digits uh, more than the other side, but the broader market, uh, tech, S&P at new highs. Uh, you know, we hit a gold, hit an all-time high back in December. What's going on? What's uh, kind I of mean, keeping us down right now? Yeah, short term, it's about interest rates, and, and so it's no surprise. And you're seeing it across not just silver, but, you know, all of the, the commodities. Um, it will turn, and uh, it you know provides an opportunity for people to expand their position. I'm going to ask you to choose your favorite between electrification, automation. Uh, you've certainly done a lot of work in terms of your mineral processes, and you've had success with that down at Lucky Friday. You have uh, the advantages with electrification and what that's going to do in terms of hopefully reduce diesel costs at uh, miners. Also, that has some advantages for underground mining. On the other hand, you have uh, automation, which could uh, increase productivity as well as also uh, give some help around labor. What do you see as being the strongest trends between those two? You know, between all of the trends, it's really innovation. So it's right. so, something completely different, <laughs> which, which is what we have done at the Lucky Friday Mine. We developed a brand new mining method. Mm -hmm. We have now had it patented. Um, and it's, it is really thinking about new ways of doing the, the, the same work. And it's, it's amazing the productivity that that mine has. It's producing about twice as many ounces than it's ever has before. So it's, that's really what we're looking for. Whether it's innovation through a mining method or innovation through, through new technologies, it, it is really about innovation. You had uh, in your uh, PowerPoint, uh, you did a call out to a copper project recently. Is there anything that you want to talk about that? Yeah, so our Rock Creek Montnor projects, we're still advancing the, the permitting on, the, on Montnor, uh, and that should be coming together during the course of this year. Phil, thank you very much for your time. Yes. Good to be with you. My name is Michael McRae here at the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference in Vancouver on behalf of Kiko Mining. Kitco Mining special coverage of the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference is brought to you by Snowline Gold.